Yes, I'm going to put my glass on, look like I'm intellectual, but no, not going to be in a shadow like my, like, uh, a lot, Mike. Uh, look, uh, don't worry about your ID, ID enough. Like we'll get to that some 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 particular point. But I particularly, what happened was, um, you know, I knew Joker was coming out, but I wasn't, you know, I'm not really a, I, I, I like film, of course. Yeah, I've been watching films since I don't know, run away to the Bronx Theater at nine years old. I mean, you know, I was just watching films all my life. And actually, my undergraduate um, degree is in like film, part of his film studies. Okay. And what I've happened. In fact, when I first came to BAI, I, I did uh, film reviews for, for the, for, at, at, at the time, it was drama literature department. You know, okay. like that thing. Anyway, um, so and I've always just watched films, always, 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 always. But then Joker came out, but I was in Louisville, Kentucky. And then I was coming back, and I, I like train, so I took the train right back. And it was a big layover in uh, in Chicago, and so Joker was playing there was at the IMAX theater. I'm like, oh, IMAX! Word. Me, I forget who's playing. I was right, right. like, I saw Ad Astra, or whatever, at the IMAX here, and you know, whatever. So, so you know, I get I get the senior citizen discount too. So you know, oh, oh okay, okay. Then, then they had the chairs to go back and all that stuff. So let me just check this out. So I checked this thing out, and it just absolutely blew me away. And then I started. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's like it's it's. it's I was I, I, I was obsessed. It's no, it didn't just stay with me. I was obsessed because there were certain key things that happened that it was, that it was obsessed, obsessed me. And then I, I came back and then in Virginia. I had nothing to do, and so I went and saw it again. Bargain matinee says, you know, five dollars, <laughs> whatever it is, you know. So I saw it again, and I and and then there was one thing that I missed the first time that hit me. I said, oh, of course. Anyway, so before I keep on going and give me any more of my assessments, just tell me what your 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 you know you know you're a comic book person too, so you know all this stuff. Some what's what's going on with this? Well, all right, a few things. I mean, I I, I have to give a little bit of context. Um, I'll give a context for me because I'm a film critic, but I'm a film lover and I'm also a filmmaker, so I'm always looking at films from those three mm. perspectives. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Okay, to you. all right. Uh, and then the other thing is that I'm a comic book fan, but I've also watched what's happened with superhero movies and and how they've sort of supplanted in our society what was you know Greek heroes and gods mm. and things like that. So we keep telling these same stories over and over again. Different actors play them mm -hmm. so uh joker is interesting for dc because dc um warner brothers was late in the game they had a success with batman so they thought let's go dark mm -hmm. nobody wanted to see dark superhero movies batman was the darkest character that dc had mm -hmm. so but because he was dark he had all these really dark villains they're all like kind of crazy people if you think about it the riddler's crazy catwoman's crazy joker's crazy these are all disturbed people and penguin they're all either deformed or disturbed people who are you, you don't think about it in a comic book but what does that really say mm -hmm. so the joker but before we get it let yeah. me just say real real quick because people sure. are gonna say wait wait we're saying we're dog dog but remember we all we all grew up on the 60s tv well, that was that was we, we, which I that think, was like that, right. that's right so we so i think a lot of I mean, not a lot of people, but you know, I never thought of Batman as as, light, as dark. I just thought of Batman because I I see the comic as 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 called Batman. You know, it's like like all the other comics to me. You know, in fact, I wasn't even I was into more. I was into Daredevil. You know, actually, right. you know, that Daredevil. kind of thing. Sure. And, you know, maybe it's just because you couldn't see who he was, and I figured I identified yeah, okay. as black or something like that. I don't know. So anyway, I just wanted to put that in context. But when you say dark, that's because that I guess that's when they really. After after that era, well, when it is well, okay. Here, let me let me back up to comic yeah. book movies. Okay, comic book movies were never something that were really because, especially with special effects. There, mm -hmm. we had Superman that was in seventy nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we had a bunch of sequels that got worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Kind of died out. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton came along, made Batman very stylish, very interesting. It was sort of a blend between that old cartoony Batman, remember from the 60s? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Batman was always detective comics. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was at night. All yes. these other heroes are during the day with bright colored costumes. Mm -hmm. Batman's dressed like a bat. He's supposed to instill fear in people. And, you know, so, but bringing in Robin and, and the whole 60s thing kind of put a different spin on Batman mm -hmm. for those who like Batman. But in the comics, Batman was still dark. Mm -hmm. So by the time uh, Tim Burton came along in the 80s and made Batman and that became successful, that was like, again, an anomaly. Superman's the most known superhero. Batman's one of the most known superhero. They had tried to do Spider-Man on TV. They had the Incredible Hulk on TV, but none of that was really yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't until, honestly, Blade 
Yes, Cable. yes. Oh, we love Blade. Now, Blade Woo. really took a, 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 essentially a B character and turned it into something else. You know, he, he really was, in my opinion at that time, was pushing the envelope. And Blade too is Guillermo del Toro, yep. who went on to, you know, win Oscars for Shape of Water and do all these great films. So it always took really visual directors to bring a superhero movie to the screen. That's what it had been. So by the time we got a reboot of Batman and the Dark Knight or, or Batman Begins came out, it was a huge success. But that was their only success. Superman had, they tried to restart a couple times. It didn't work. So meanwhile, Marvel started with, again, because they'd sold off all their characters to other studios, they only had like Iron Man left. Iron Man was like a B character mm. who... You know, but again, they did it the right way. It hit the right tone and it began this whole taking, you know, they had Hulk, they had all these characters who they hadn't sold away. Like they had sold away Fantastic Four mm -hmm. and those weren't that good. They'd sold away Spider-Man. They had been successful, but not for Marvel. Mm -hmm. So at this point, DC thought with their success of Batman that they should go dark. Mm. And that's where they brought in this guy, Zack Snyder. Mm. Okay, now I'm getting a little granular here. Wait, wait, but Zack, but Zack to me wasn't really a director. To me, he's not a, he's not a, he's not a director. You know what I mean? He, hey, well, he's, Zach, a, he's a dark character. I was going to say, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, what they forget is <laughs> Zack Snyder's a horror guy. Yeah. So yeah. you bring in a horror guy, to, a cynical horror guy to do comic books and lead. It. Of course, that's not what anybody really wanted to see. Marvel was going with the humor and the and they're not taking itself too seriously. And and they built the universe correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody you get to a step just like the comic books had done before you have a group up. You have to establish the characters on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, you like Daredevil. Yeah. So if Daredevil teamed up with Spider-Man, you might read that team up. And then maybe you get into Spider-Man. You know what I mean? So what Marvel's done was really what was done in the comics. Now, coming back to DC, they kept, you know, they did Suicide Squad. They did this. It was all hit or miss. Okay. Wonder Woman worked. Aquaman worked. But, you know, Justice League didn't work. Do you know what I mean? Superman didn't work that well. So for this, they were supposed to be giving a film to Jared Leto to do a Joker film. I don't know if you know this controversy, but nobody really liked Jared Leto as Joker. So, and he did all kinds of crazy things on set. So that kind of pushed to the side. Todd Phillips, now here's what's interesting to me. Todd Phillips is a director who does comedy. He did the Hangover movies. Mm -hmm. We're living in an age now where comedy has become more relevant than anything. Can you ever, would you have ever imagined 20 years ago that Saturday Night Live would become so relevant that the next day everybody's talking about who was on Saturday Night Live? Well, when it first came on, you had, you said, you said, you had 40 years ago. That's true. Okay. But for at least 20, 25 years, it was oh, like, yeah, right, yeah. you know. Well, so comedy, because comedians make us look at ourselves and laugh at ourselves and talk about the human condition, just like science fiction, it's interesting that now all of our strongest comedic directors are all making these serious films mm -hmm. you know whether it's political films so for Todd Phillips you know and he's been quoted as saying that thing you know I don't remember what his exact quote is he said but he couldn't make uh comedies anymore it's just it, oh no be, be, because of the, the uh the identity politics identity and the, politics, so, the social exactly. justice war and something like that there it is but before you continue on top I want this to be more I'm just context yeah, yes. so yeah I got you uh, um Here's the thing. When I looked at this thing, and I, I knew a little bit, I didn't really see the hangover from it, but I knew he was a comic book. Mm -hmm. I, I look at this thing, I'm saying, wait a second. I look at, like, for me, a director, aside from casting correctly, a director is a, is a he's like the, 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 the mayor of a city. You know what I mean? Because you got all this stuff Correct. happening. Completely. But also, when you when he's looking at a script or working in collaboration with scripts with the script, and, and and if you have a one character with actors, then really all it is, is it, all it is is about pacing, and, and and rhythm and pacing. So it doesn't matter if you're a comic or not. If you get into a person's rhythm and pacing, you know what I mean? It's, it's like music. If you can have a, a comedic of uh, the guy on a, on a, on a, on a, on, a, on a clarinet. But he can still play with it. If he plays, he plays music. He can play with a symphony orchestra as well as a jazz orchestra as well as a thing. So it's just about the pacing and, and, and if you can vibe, you know, that kind of thing. So it doesn't surprise me if a comic director really becomes, is a director first 
and the, you know, then he's using the, you see? Right, right. It's just a way of another way. Yeah. Like I say, yeah. I agree with you. Well, here's what I say. And it's interesting to use the music analogy because, you know, I teach film too. And one of the things I always tell my students is it's important to understand genre because you may have a story to tell. Right. And you may think it's one kind of story, but is that the best genre for you to tell the story in? The uh, more you understand the genre. So a film uh, like this now, how are you going to make Joker work? How, how are you going to make a standalone Joker movie? Is he just going to be crazy? What, what is it? He's always been this crazy genius. How are you going to make the audience? How are you going to make it grounded in reality? That's that's what Batman Begins did. You know, it took this character's kind of ridiculous. He runs around in a cape, mm. but he, he grounded it in reality. And that's what Joker does. Like, what would it take for someone to become a quote unquote supervillain? You know, all the things we know about Joker, what would it take? So it's like the Joker origin story. If you look at the society we live in, it's not too hard to imagine people who were disaffected, especially with what's been happening with violence, which is why they were so afraid of this movie. It's not too hard to imagine that somebody who went off their meds could potentially wreak havoc, which is what has been happening. So I think that as a core idea of like, this is who Joker is, is, is a start a start off point for what the Joker movie is. Does that make any sense to you? That makes sense, perfect sense to me, which is one of the things that, that hit me. See, the, the thing... Um, okay, when I looked at the film, I, I, first thing I, coming out, I, I, I sort of almost, I don't want to say discounted, but I played down really the phenomenal performance of, of, mm, of Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. uh, basically, I said, okay, Joaquin, fine. What? Because I'm always looking at what, right. okay, that, everybody's talking about, right, what else is going on here? And one of the things I realized, yeah, it's supposed to be this guy's descent or whatever it is. But to me, it was like, how did we get to this point here in 2019? When did it start? And then I, I real, one of the first thing I realized about the film, when they had the marquee for uh, Zorro the Gay Blade, right? They came out in 81 or something like in the early 80s. And I said, right, the descent of the, where we are now, really our dis, this descent of society or the de-evolution of society really started in, late, in really in the late 70s. Well, first of all, in the early 70s when we, when we went off the gold standard, but then things started to hit, like, you know, in like in late in the in the late seventies, in the early eighties, that's when things like, you know, people got thrown out of um, the SROs were going in New York, for instance, so all the crazy people were now I don't say crazy, like you know what I mean? They were all on the streets, you have, you know, homelessness began because of the, the high rents, all the rest of that stuff. So now you have the the, the I like to say the downtrodden. Because yeah. I'm a I'm part of the downtrodden class, you know, I grew up in the down with the downtrodden. You down with the downtrodden? I'm down with the downtrodden. And so I looked at it as the film is not only uh, 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 a friend of mine in South Africa, uh, uh, Tulani, he says, um, you know, oh, we're all damaged, you know, which is kind of interesting. But now what's happened is the, 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 this is like to me a class war. You know, the rich, the re rich really from the early 80s have taken advantage of of this whole fiat money system, the money system change. And then Absolutely. they start. And then that's what started this whole spiral and up until then. As long as you didn't have the so-called wealth, wealth gap gap, then we was. Well, yeah, OK, you OK, you got a bigger car than me. I don't know. I don't, I'll do it my scooter, whatever it is. Right. So so I looked at it like that. That's the first thing that happened to me. So I, I just want to stop you there. But I just 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 to my well, little I definitely want to add to that to say that, you know, it's interesting because the reality is, you know, Joker is an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. OK, so if you've got an anti-hero, you've got a protagonist who's generally an antagonist who then in the movie is the antagonist. Mm -hmm. The antagonist in Joker is society. Mm -hmm. The enemy is society. And who's at the top? The rich people. Mm -hmm. So when he kills the rich guys on the train, people are almost cheering. When when, uh, you know, you find out what Bruce Wayne's father did, you know, again, he's vilified. He's re he's an uh, an agent of uh, the antagonist, which is society, society. The government cuts off his meds, you know, you know, they, they hid his identity from him, all these things. So w what you're saying is that class war is really in, in part what Joker represents more than even it wants to be. They never anticipated this movie to have all of the social impact it does because the reality is it's just touching upon a few things. It doesn't really have much to say. It reminds you of better films. 
Oh, contraire, but keep okay, on Okay, well, here's what I was going to say. It reminds you of a better film. Now, I'm not saying it's not a great film. I'm just saying that what it's saying, it's not like it's never been said before. You know, it's definitely shades of Taxi Driver. There's definitely shades of uh, um, King of Comedy. You know, there, there are definitely movies about, you know, disaffected uh, people and, and people who, who you end up empathizing with. And I'll use a good example. OK, the movie Monster, mm -hmm. the movie Monster, Charlize Theron, Charlize yeah. Theron she plays a, uh, a serial killing prostitute. Now, she's a serial killing prostitute, but you sympathize with her. Okay, you don't necessarily condone it, but you understand why she becomes a serial killing prostitute. Okay, I got you. I got you. So I can cons consider Joker similar in like w why it's more about the why than the what. He doesn't do a lot of killing. Okay, let me. I gotta go some more context. Well, sure, sure. Let me go say, with it. Go with that, like as we've established, I'm down with the down trial. Yeah, yeah, I know okay. you're down with the down trial. Pat Patterson Projects, mm -hmm. South Bronx, Mount Haven section for real. Now look. All my life, we have always, we have always identified with, with what you're calling the anti-hero. I'll give you an example. Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a better, ex a really good example. Uh, I, I, I did craft service for, for The Sopranos, uh, part of the second season and, and the third season. And Jim Gunnafino said, said the story after, when the first season was through, when the first season first aired, he was moving so someplace and he, somehow he had to be in, you know, he had to, he had to be in like a, a Washington Heights for a while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he goes to this bar and nobody really knew what the Sopranos was and everybody in the bar knew who he was. He was like shocked. So what, but this is an Italian thing. But here, here we got a black and you know, Dominican or whatever, Puerto Rican neighborhood and everybody knows who I am. What's going on here? You know what I mean? Because the, the Soprano character, Tony Soprano, is an anti-hero. Let me give you a better example. Uh, uh, when I went to a, a graduate school, one of my teachers was Avery Brooks, right? So I'm, 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 I was at, at School of Visual Arts. I was, you know, modeling at School of I've Visual Arts. I've interviewed Avery Brooks. Yeah, yeah. He's got a deeper voice than me. Well, Avery's got a wonderful voice. Yes, he does. Um, uh, and, and, and I was uh, at school. Anyway, I was on 23rd Street. In that area, there was a lot of uh, methadone maintenance things. So mm -hmm. he pops out of a limousine one time. I'm going down and say, hey, Avery, hey. You know, so we, we just stand there on the street. Just, just on the Right, and where we just going in, just standing and just talking. You no know, white people walking by, nobody, nobody. This is when he was doing Hawk. Everybody mm -hmm. walking by, nobody knew who he was. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody that was a meth, you can tell, was a methadone maintenance person knew who, who he was. was. Of course. What I'm trying to say is, we always identify with that. The, the, I agree. But to what I'm what I'm saying is, those people that say, "Oh, it's a violence," whatever have you, examine those those media people who say that they don't come from this class. I agree. To me, it was, how could you excite, how could, what do you mean excite violence? Did, did we, we know these people. These are not violent people. These are us. You, you understand what I'm saying? I just want to say, it's including Shari Stern and Monster. These are us. These, no, this is not a bad person. Uh, listen, these are us. I agree. Well, I also, I'll add to what you're saying. I agree with you a thousand percent. I'll add to what you're saying is that in, the reality is bad guys are a lot more interesting than good guys. There are a lot more people who love Darth Vader than they love Luke Skywalker. Mm. Okay. He's a lot more interesting. There's a reason why gangster movies, Car uh, Scarface, those movies, you know, the Jim, James Cagney, all, all, there's a long history of antiheroes, mm. you know, criminals as a star of a film, mm -hmm. which is what the Joker is. He's essentially a criminal. He's a sociopath. Yeah, just yeah. like Taxi Driver, just like King of Comedy, just like Fight Club, you know, which is also owes a, a page to. Yeah, James so, Cagney. My, right. Yeah, well, so, yeah. so, but again, these are all characters who are disaffected. These are, these are people who are fighting back. And, and the reason that people identify, of course, I think with bad guys, both people, not just the downtrodden, Mm -hmm. Okay, because the downtrodden, while they definitely, you know, love these movies, not just the downtrodden that love a movie like Good Joker. People love a bad guy or a bad girl because they get to do what they couldn't do. Mm. Okay. They get to okay. break like the lots. rules. Yeah, okay. You know, so I think it's the same attraction. Like, why does the good girl like the bad boy? Because mm. secretly the good girl would like to be a bad boy, yeah. you know, or yeah. be a bad girl. Yeah. So yeah. that's you. my take on that. And I because I agree with you. And yeah. that's why antiheroes, we love them.
Yeah. Let me let me let me go to my little uh, take. What really affected me the second time I saw Joker, mm-hmm. I realized something when he's talking to the, to the brother behind the the, the the cage there, but he's when trying to when had the files of his mm-hmm. mother, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know that brother's got he, he's doing some really great he, work. He's doing a lot of work. He oh lot of man, work, but yes. he's some. I'm talking about great work. This is a real person. Mm-hmm. This is like mm-hmm. you know. He, anyway, um, and I, I realized some the Joker says well, uh, and he says well, well you know brother. He calls him brother. Yes, he does. And then I started flashing. I goes, wait a second. When, when we when when he's in the, when he when he's interacting with, with with that little kid in the bus, he's mm-hmm. in the back of the bus with mm-hmm. the with the with the with mm-hmm. the with the mm-hmm. mother. I, I'm assuming that she she's a, a mother that's not a single mother. Uh, yeah, a single mother. Yeah, but also she's a well, I guess they call it immigrant mother now or something like that. Mm-hmm. She sounds you know like mm-hmm. like that. Um, part of the downtrodden. Part of the downtrodden. Uh, but there's another scene where he's in a bus alone in the back of the bus. Okay, hold on a second. Now, when he when he first talk when he talks that psych to the one that said, "Oh, you know, we, we off your meds, whatever have it," he's having an inti- basically it's an intimate conversation. So right now, what I'm trying to say, everybody he's talked to so far is that the people he talked to are in the, the is black people, the lowest of the downtrodden, and he's most intimate with the lowest of the downtrodden. Now the clowns. Now, if you look at them as a subset of 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 the society, or even the clowns, oh, come on, they got to have these jobs that they they're, they're in danger. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And you see the danger. Even that, I thought that was brilliant too. When when the kids, you know, when he, when when mm-hmm. the kids beat up on them in the, in the beginning, mm-hmm. whatever have you. And what's most important for that scene when they take that sign and smack him on his head, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if he, if, before you knew about his backstory, mm-hmm. you know. He starts his decline as far as the film goes from the hit on that head. Mm-hmm. And you know what? What is it? The danger of being a downtrodden. You know, did, you, did somebody drop you on your head when you're a kid? Blah 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 mm-hmm. blah. And he doesn't blame them. It was also brilliant right. that that the director chose not to have like black kids. They had you know the mix, amorphous mix mixed race, yeah, like yeah. that. And uh, and and they and, and they yeah, they stomp them, but they that's the kind of childhood we had. Where we didn't do that violence. We, there was no cutting. There was no there was no uh, well, shooting. Whatever have you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fist fight. It's, it's either stomp them, boom, 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 and then run away like right. that. Delinquent and, shit. And, yeah, and he didn't he didn't blame them. No, he because didn't. he he is them, so he didn't blame right. them. Now, but now as you keep on going, he gets the gun. You know. What from a big white guy? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not going to. You know, and when, well, that, when, 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 when he gets a statement too on the access of guns to crazy people. That's right. And remember, the guy wasn't in his clown suit yet. You know, the guy that gave him the gun wasn't in his clown suit yet. Okay. And the guy also betrayed him. Exactly. Exactly. We betrayed him as soon as he gave it to him. Anyway, so so now if we keep on, I'm just going to keep with this with this black theme. And then his fantasy when he's talking to 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 to, to his 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 um neighbor. Uh, his neighbor, you know. She accepts him because they're in the same building. Well, by the way, when I first saw those those steps, I said, oh, the Bronx. I said, the Bronx. You know what I'm talking about, ain't yeah. it? Because those steps, amazing. Anyway, and the kid, and all the kids accept him. You know what I mean? If you want to look at it. The, even the delinquents, they sort of, they're playing with him. You know what I mean? So they accept him. And so, so it's, of course, the whole thing is a fantasy in his head eventually. But the only other person he's intimate with or as intimate with is his mother, his adoptive mother. His abusive adopted mother, mm-hmm. his crazy adopted mother. Mm-hmm. You see, so so I'm looking at this, and say, wow, brother, da, da, I'm gonna. So he's really down with the most down of the downtrodden. Right now, so so let me let me stop there. You can keep on going with your analysis because I want to. No, no, no. Let me say this, but but now we, you say, but okay. So what happened? Uh, now let me get to that later. Let me let me let me let me. Let me well, I, I'm I'm following you. I mean, I've been reading. There's been a lot written about you know, the, the racial undertones and, you know, I, I agree. He does connect with, as you say, the down of the downtrodden. Um, most of the, the, there are, you know, let's face it, Batman's white, Bruce Wayne's white, Joker's white, you know, most of all these characters, I mean, we're going to have a black cat woman again, but in general, most heroes have been white, that's that's something that's just beginning to change. So in terms of the casting and the fleshing out of this world, in the script, the original Joker script, it is written that he lives in a black neighborhood. It's not super clear, but anybody who lives in New York knows, all right, he's in a black neighborhood. Okay. But it's not New York, it's Gotham City. Yeah, so, sure. you know, so but we all know Gotham City is New York. So but again, I think part of 
you know, the connection there, like you said, is that, yes, these are, he is, like you said, the reason we identify with him, he is us. He is the part of the downtrodden. He is part of the disaffected. You know, some people have had taken issue with the fact that he connects with all these black women. Really? Oh, yeah. Black women. Well, I, I read, I read, uh, uh, no, no, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is why I brought in the mother. Mm -hmm. Also, I didn't bring in, I didn't want to say it right now, but the midget. The only person he actually, I mean, aside, he let the midget go, right? And now he lets the give. He kisses the midget. Yes, because the kids, the midget is him. He knows the midget has a hellish life too. So if, 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 when people, this is what upset, not upsets. This is what this is why I keep. I try to say downtrodden. You have to remember when mm -hmm. I grew up in the Patterson Project. My next door neighbors were white. The next door was Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And now in the Patterson Projects, we were totally mixed. Mm -hmm. And so in my era. Right, you know, we didn't get whatever in my era. So for me, it's more about class. Than the, it's, it's about it's about class. Yes, I'm saying people say class. I understand that, and it's true. It's true. True. But I say cast mm. class mm. and and and, and like that. Cast. Yeah, class. That's what it is for me. Uh, you know what I mean? And I've been to India. I'm telling you, it is cast. You know. But here's the here's the interesting thing. Um, I realized the way I grew up. At the same time, if you were say in an all black neighborhood. You was another you you was another kind of person. If you grew up in an all if you're a black person grew up in an all white neighborhood, you was another person. It seemed to me if you grew up in an all white neighborhood and you was black, you when when the sixties came, whatever have you, you tried to be more black than black. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in an all black neighborhood, then you try you 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 were down in the door with the white people. For me, I'm looking like I didn't have any of those problems. I can't explain it. I didn't have any I didn't have that mentality. Don't get me wrong, I'm black power, you know, but black you know, black liberation, you know, black arts movement. I'm not down with that, but my my inner soul wasn't persecuting people and I wasn't blaming people and I wasn't doing certain things. So my, my brain was sort of weirdly different. You, you, you know, I, I, I'm wired differently that way, you know? Oh, I know you're wired differently. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, so, so anyway, I don't want to rift up, but I, it was, it's important for me to, to uh, this, when when people when people say the identity part of social justice, they racialize it way too much. They racialize it because they come from a racial point of view. I don't come from a racial point. I come from a downtrodden point of view. That's the that's the difference. Well, the downtrodden point of view in this, in many ways is is a more universal point of view. But I will say, you know, you know, we talked, uh, you know, beginning this film, beginning this conversation, you know, we talked. I talked about the different ways I would look at film as a filmmaker, film lover, film critic. But you know, however, it's it's like any experience, you know, the lens with which you view the world or the view of the film is going to influence your takeaway. You know, I'm going to see the film uh, mm -hmm. as a black man. Sure. You know, they're, they're, like you said, with the exception of the, the brother, mm -hmm. there aren't a lot of black men in here. That's so, right. so I don't feel underrepresented necessarily. I don't feel overrepresented. I don't feel negatively represented. The brother is sympathetic, you know, uh, but this is what these people are doing. So I identify with them on that broader scale, like you said, the downtrodden or whatever. But it, as a black woman, you know, one, what these women have been writing about, I, I mean, Zeba Blay is, is, is also a colleague and, and she's been on my TV show when I had TV show, you know, they question why does he relate to these? Are, are these stereotypes, these, these these black women? And, you know, they're legitimate questions. I don't necessarily agree. But my position on a lot of films, if I see a film written and directed by a white person, mm. I'm not looking for them to give me everything I want out of representation in a film. Mm. I, I, I'm looking, I'll wait for the black filmmaker to do that. Mm. If we're in there and we're not dissed i'm good okay mm -hmm. but i i don't look to like a movie like green book i understood what green book was about i got it i, I enjoyed green book i was in the minority i didn't i wasn't offended i didn't see it this i didn't see it that way it's not that movie you know it's his son the the italian guy's son you know was part of the film and was one of the producers and you know and you know it's not the story of yeah. that guy yeah he's gonna present us right so yeah. i say all that to say you know people have racialized uh, Joker in in ways and read things into Joker. I, while I think Joker's good, I don't think Joker stands up completely to all the analysis. I think there are a lot of choices that the director made that were brilliant, that were great. I think that the the fact that these women, even though he identifies with them and they they have sympathy for him, 
they are unnamed. Yeah, but wait, 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 wait. Hold and on. I think that has to do with his relationship with the world. Okay, this is this is true. But check this out. Mm -hmm. With the with the, with the three white guys, which is actually role reversal on the Bernard Guest thing. We won't get into that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't get to that at all. But remember, their first day, these white guys are first attacking a white woman. Yes, they are. She gets up and walks. Out, you know, looks at him, but but also walks walks out and walks past him, which is a sensible thing to do. Mm -hmm. So he she didn't have a chance to identify with him or not identify with him. You know what I mean? They were in a, it, it was it was almost like remember there was if you're in the back of the bus, you know, we're, 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 that's where black people are. You're in a tenement where, where black people are in the subway car. That's a universal kind of thing, and you're on the same level. And she got a chance to walk out of the situation with these other black women, even the women in the job. They don't have a chance to walk out of their situation. So the white woman gets to walk out of his situation. How do you know he, he could never have a, if he wasn't, well, maybe he wasn't crazy, he maybe he maybe came to her aid in another way. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so uh, I do. So, so I'm, I'm, I understand what they're saying. I, I get all that stuff. But I don't, I, I don't, I, that's why I stay on this downtrodden thing. Because obviously that woman wasn't downtrodden. She's reading a book. Mm -hmm. She's dressed whatever, however she's dressed, mm -hmm. and she has no children, and she can walk right out of the situation. But most of the downtrodden, we can't walk out of that situation. Well, you know, again, like you said, you know, and maybe not everybody wants to be seen necessarily as downtrodden, you know. But uh, again, those who are in a certain caste in mm -hmm. society, you know, there's always going to be a pecking order, no matter what part of society. We're in a capitalist system. It, yeah, blah, that's blah, blah. what's destroyed everything. But. Uh, I, 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 again, I see what they're saying, and it's a legitimate point of view. I may or may not agree. I may or may not have read into these things. You know, I won't dismiss it, but I don't have to. I don't have to necessarily agree. I do think that Joker uh, is a better film because of the cinematography, because oh. of the acting. Uh, because of the just score. the vision, of the score, score, the vision, it's great filmmaking. Mm. You know, it's a really well-made film and it's visceral. You know, there are things in the film, you know, like anything, you know, if you read about, you know, like that dance he does after he first kills, you know, that wasn't in the script. Mm. That was something that kind of happened after he heard some of the music for the film. And, you know, so there are a lot of things that, you know, artists explore when they're on a theme and on a topic. And I think it explores a lot of things. Okay, let me say Does something about. Let me say about the dancing. Remember, I have a theater background, mm -hmm. and I stage managed dances for a long time. Mm -hmm. For me, dancing is nothing about movement. Mm. Now, when he first gets attacked, when he he his first movement is in clown shoes. This is true. How do you? That's a he's dancing. He's always dancing. This That's what I'm trying to say. He's always he's always in motion. Even when you see him first walking, you know, when he was going home up the steps, you know what I mean? He's got that hunched look, whatever, a defeated look. But it's a movement. It's a dance. And if you look at him, he, when, he, when he's going up the steps, going home to his whatever mm -hmm, have you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is a, uh, a, a, a defeated thing. Right. But later on in the movie, right. he's it's, dancing it's down. A celebration, the right. Why? Because he got released. Now, how did how did Joker first get released? Then now we have to look at how he gets released. Mm -hmm. Then the, the the things that released him, you know what right. I mean? Now, the first thing is, I look, if you notice, the his really tri tripped me off. I look, at, again, I look at his Joker self, you know, in the, uh, with his mask, red, white, and blue. Mm. Dare we say, remember, racism started with, with the racial classification of racism started with America, 1776. Well, in this country. In the, yeah. No, all, look at your Bible. They don't say black and white enough this like that. This is true. This is you're, true. You're East Yoke. Before, before, oh, before, before America. I'm just saying Europeans and other countries were doing this racial thing too. They brought it over here. Yeah, but, or, uh, it got caught up. Let me put it this way. Let me, let me. It took oh, over oh, here. Oh, oh, let, me, let, me, let me be academic about please, this. Please, please. It got codified here. Yes. Okay? I, can, can, can I, can I, I concur. I, I concur. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> anyway, red, white, and blue. That's, that's the American, that, that's the American white supremacy thing. So that's his. That's his. Everybody wants to. Anybody can put on that, and, and 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 anybody can put on that Joker mask, no matter what your thing is, and become a white supremacist. What he has become. Well, you know, I agree. I, I agree say. with you. Well, I also I'll add to that again to say that I also think you could read, you know, social commentary into that. That you know, one of the things that has happened today, you know, power to the people, where is the power, where are the people's power today? People's power today, whether they know it or not, is really in social media. Mm 
Okay, because mm-hmm. and what happens to social media? You know, the reason they will fire somebody if there's some indiscretion right away is because right away the word gets out. You know, they could lose money, blah blah blah. So they got to make a move right away. Mm-hmm. How is it going to be seen? Because it's going to take off. It's going to be quote unquote backlash. You mm-hmm. know. So I say all that to say, you know, at this point, you know, when a uh, when a character is is representing something you know or when people want to have something to say the the beauty of social media is you can be anonymous you can have a fake name you can hide behind the mask Mm. you know how do Mm. people date Mm. they date when they have photos everything you look on instagram everybody's got a filter everybody's wearing a mask everybody's trying to appear a certain way Mm -hmm. than the way they really are and the other thing is you know it's the best way to hide like you said ku klux klan whatever it is you can hide behind your mask and do what you really want to do Mm. and that's what joker gave these people they can hide behind the mask do what they're gonna want if you if everybody's wearing a clown mask and you want to destroy it they'll never find you mm. because everybody and you're destroying this this storefront i'm glad you put that's kind of interesting now the cops this is a whole other thing that always upset me because i've been in the military and i can and, but i wasn't i was a medic you know you know i'm like i'm i've been in the military but my last name is sergeant <laughs> <laughs> that counts for something. Maybe. Anyway, but, <laughs> but here's the thing. When those cops were, you know, they, you know, when they were chasing him, I was first I thought I was but when the cop pulls out a gun and a crowded thing, this didn't start when I grew up the cops didn't pull out no guns. And he, 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 he was he, he wasn't yeah. it wasn't evident that he had a gun. There was no reason for them to pull out a gun in a crowded train. And then and then, and then, and the shooting happens. Now we can say that maybe that's a cinematic device, whatever have you, but to me that is emblematic again of today. You have this whole militarization because remember I saw this in Chicago. And when I was coming back, I realized you know they had the Amtrak police, and they all when they put on that the, those Kevlars or whatever they have, they all have the same posture. They have the same almost if you can feel the attitude, it's them and it's us, the unwashed masses, and we're going to make sure we have order. But that didn't that the cops didn't used to be that way when I grew up. What? You know what I mean? Well, you know, I agree with you, and and I'll add to it. But finish what you're saying. Yeah, what you're saying. But, but, but but I think let me just stop it right there. That's that's, that's all. Well, I, I think that that's also another aspect. Again, we're talking about what what are what are movies talking about? What is what is some of the social commentary here? What are the themes? You know, human beings are tribal. By sure, nature. Truly. Okay, and so the us and them is it's an instinctual thing. But the question is. Or, or the problem is, or the issue is, like, okay, you, you, there is an us in them, but who's your us? You know, you want to be part of something. You know, you want to be part of a movement. You know, when people are all feeling the same way, you know, you can be excited and ignited. OK, but what's actually going to happen? OK, mm-hmm. you know, if we all kind of feel the same way, mm-hmm. what can we really do about it? What action are we going to take? You know, the reason Occupy Wall Street never took off is because there was no action. There was no clear plan. Occupy Wall Street could have been huge, mm-hmm. but it, it had no leadership. It had no plan. If they said, OK, you know, Occupy Wall Street says every company's got to put yeah. money to pay for uh, kids, you know, bus pass. Yeah. Who wouldn't get behind that? I got but you. Nothing was accomplished. Yeah, well, what, what you're saying? I was I was down there with Occupy Wall Street. So was I. I they, like you remember yeah, I, was, yeah. I had them on all the people. Yeah. They were on my show. But, this, but the thing, what they didn't have, what you're talking about, they didn't have a political agenda. They didn't have a plan. They didn't have a plan. It's not that they were leaderless. That 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 wasn't. They, 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 they had, had a lot of. of you know, but but they didn't have a political. They didn't have a clear political. No. But let me. I won't get off on them. No, I don't. I'm just using this example because then we have to go. You know, we have to go to the last the last Nolan Batman movie, whatever. So we won't let that day. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. That's true. Uh, but but but, but, but I, I but the thing is, I want to get to this part because I we've been rambling on, and and I usually make my things shorter, but I want to keep okay. this purposely long, unedited because I want. I just feel like this is a. I just feel like doing it like this. People okay. don't have to watch this video. You mean because it's your show? <laughs> <laughs> it's my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's your channel. But it's your channel. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Then I look at the evol- his evolution, everything that, that caused him. Even if you look at the um, um, the whole uh, talk show guy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Talk show guy, you know. De Niro. He, yeah, he, he 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 almost he baits him. What I was saying, he 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 they they go and they research, they they get footage of him doing his comedic beat. So so they 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 they're taking advantage of the downtrodden again. But if you really, I looked at a still, not a still, but I was saw some, one of the things where when he's in when Joker's in the dressing room before it goes on, and you realize that 
uh, in the in the background, there's a a, a a photo of this talk show guy, and he has a smile like a Joker on there, right there. Right. So I'm trying to say there's a couple of things he had to do. First, he had to kill his mother. Right. That's the one thing for him to become completely the Joker, Free, right, right yeah. there. Then he had to kill. His idol. The, 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 I don't know if he was. A, well, okay, you can say he's his idol. Okay, I'm not gonna. That, that's fine. That's fine. I'm saying he had to kill a real Joker. Mm. That's so that might, I don't, don't get, you're absolutely right. I'm saying he had to kill his idol, but I look at him as his, the real Joker because that Joker was that he was a Joker. He was he his show. These kind of people like that. They do more damage than the Joker have, could ever do. How many years is that guy on TV damaging people? Talking, you know what I mean? Uh, self, you, you understand what I'm talking yes, about. I might want to go for it. So, so that was one thing. What did I want to say? There was a, another thing that, that, that released. Yeah, just the mother or whatever. Uh, 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 Kill the downtown. Yeah, that, that was it. So, so I'm saying, so he became the Joker. But in, this is like, it was a great origin story because the East Layer, as East Layer, he became uh, once again and again and again and again and again. All of a sudden, so he he you saw his metamorphosis to, to the Joker. Sure. Now, if they if, if these folks, let me go. Let my last little sure, point. Sure, sure, sure. When he's at the end, when he's being interviewed again by a black woman, right? But she, but remember, she's not the downtrodden anymore. She's uh, she's she is the prison the, the prison guard, the warder, if you will, right? That so he has to kill her. Because now he's completely the Joker. Now no one, no one, no one is safe. The, no, even if you look like the downtrodden, he's not. Make, he's going to say even, maybe he might spare some downtrodden. Because remember, he's just as he become the Joker, he spared the the, the midget, right? Uh, <laughs> but this woman, she clearly is uh, well, it represents the power. Re right? Exactly. So, so I'm still looking at this, even though it's a mask of a white supremacist. Under that. It's a downtrodden thing, which goes me back to what it, the agents of white supremacy, if I want to put, I don't put it that way, they are also the downtrodden. It's just they can use their whiteness to mask their downtroddenness to, again, lash out at systems, if I can say it that way, and, and, and lash out at themselves, you know, you know the other downtrodden people. That's it. That's my whole no. Well, I, I can't say I disagree with you, but I will say that, that the other th most powerful theme, I think, of this film is because the same thing happens, the government, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Wayne, his mother, uh, and his idol all betray him. Mm -hmm. So he is a victim of betrayal. You know, the government betrays him, they cut off the funding, the, the, the you know, his friend betrays him, he turns him, turns him and says, oh, that's not my gun. His job betrays him, they fire him. Uh, his mother betrayed him, she, he realizes she let him be abused. Uh, you know, everyone has betrayed him. You know, his idol makes fun of him, he's betrayed him. So, everyone has betrayed him. So, that, that is a powerful theme. Like, how do you react to betrayal, especially when the betrayal is from those who are closest to you? Yeah. And I think that that is something people can I relate to, too. When, when, you know, when your own parent or your own family or your own, whoever you trust, a, a, a deep trust leads to a deep betrayal. And I think deep betrayal just leads to you justifying whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. But here, the, the, the one well, fact that this last, again, yeah. I said mm -hmm. that's the last thing I lied, of course. <laughs> uh, but when he is dancing down those steps, yes, I love that. So I do some Tai Chi too, but I yeah. love that dance. Because at that moment, he was incredibly free. He's yes. free. He's yes. free. He's totally free. He's become... No one can what betray him anymore. Yeah. And who comes to interrupt his dance? The authorities, of course. Who can, of course. It's, 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 what, this is what I also see in the black community. If these if these people are, 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 are railing against uh, women or whatever have you, I have bigger railing against. You know, black people, we be minding our own business. You know what I mean? Our we have, damn we have, business. We having our fun and everything like that. And what do they do? They get a rookie cop to come into our, 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 our environs. They get some some killer cops to come into our environs. They get whatever to come to, to mess up our dance. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say to you, the reason why I love this movie more than I should is because I don't identify it as some white guy in a, in a weird white and blue mask. I identify it as a downtrodden just like me mm. and having a, a, a made a way so I can have a good time. I wasn't trying. Well, okay, I killed one guy because, you know, well, guess what? You know, he needed to be killed, you know. But, but other than that, okay, I killed my mama because she needed to be killed. Mm. But, you know, hey. I'm having a good time and y'all messing with me is what's happening in the city right now. You know what I mean? The black people are being pushed out and what's going to replace it with? 
people that are bland, people that have no, they, they, they can, they're going to, no, they're going to, they're going to follow black people. Where the black people going now? We got to, we lost our culture. I mean, we lost our, we lost our fun. It's da, 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 like da, da, da. when the, the, when they moved into Harlem, the, let's just say the bland people moved into Harlem and got rid of the drumming in the park because it was too much. Oh boy, yeah. you know what I'm talking. About. Oh man, now, hey, I was down. I was I was down at at, Tom, at the Topkin Square when when I'll tell you when it happened. I tell you when, again. This started happening in the '80s too. We had we Topkin Square was Topkin Square. You know what Topkin Square was? Mm-hmm. We yes, everything like remember that. The whole thing. Madonna moved into some penthouse. Then all these Wall Street people started falling there, and they said, "Well, we can't sleep." We're going like, "Well, what didn't you want in the neighborhood you was moving into? What's wrong with you?" You're gonna change is. you. You have yes. the again. You have the yes. power to change our culture it's or our, our thing. That's how America's great. <laughs> you roll over and make it something else, Mike. So, what you doing these days, man? Uh well, actually, I'm about to launch two podcasts, and I don't know if I'm going to be on the radio anymore because I don't know what's happening with the radio station. But I'm a film critic. You can see me, uh, especially around this time. I'll be doing PBS News Hour. I do Fox Business News. Uh, when you do PS News out, what do you do for you? Critic for them? I film critic. Yeah, I'm film critic for all of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not in the city, man. I live in South Carolina. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I also do I24 News, which is a national. I do that. I've done Al Jazeera. Okay, you got. Uh, I'm going to have to list this the common thing. I'm going to get your details and list it down or something like that. Uh, you can just put up my Twitter. I'll give my Twitter. Mike on screen. Mike on screen. M I K E O N S C R E E N. That's it. So Mike that's, on is, is that at Mike on screen? At Mike on screen. Yeah. I don't do Twitter either, so I don't know what you're. All right. Doing. Well, you know, just you know, social media is a necessary evil. You know? <laughs> and for you, for me, then you got to sell some. I'm a semi-public figure. I'm just archiving. This is for hey. This is for archival purposes only. From me, T. From the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, along with Mike Sargent, the great Mike Sargent. Mm. Night shift.